What's up you guys, this is Devin from Project Sax and I'm just looking at another cannonball here. Here's a black lacquer with silver keys on it. Um, I found this thingy in here. I don't, I don't necessarily know where it goes. I hope I don't find out soon. <laughs> I, di I didn't do this. Um, but, till then, yeah. So as you know, all cannonballs have two necks on them. And, uh, you have the, this one, uh, the fat neck, the silver edition, um, with the stone on the back, inverted out the key, for those of you who don't know. And then you have, um, uh, see here. The traditional one that come comes with the saxophone with the overhead out key. So first we're gonna try the original one. I don't know why it is here. I think this is to protect the horn, uh, but it doesn't have a cap over the top, so it kind of it seems a little irrelevant. But it does protect the the neck pip from breaking. So we're gonna try. The black one that came comes with the saxophone traditionally first. And, uh, here we go. All right. And for those of you who don't know, I am using um, a plastic reed. It's good to tell people who I'm using plastic reed on a V16 mouthpiece. So that's good. So let's give it a shot here. I'm just doing some warm ups. this horn but like I said before we're gonna go over three main topics we're gonna to do an exercise of three main topics to review this horn fully but I really like this horn but I gotta leave it a little bit so we're going to make this short and simple and sweet and to the point all right first thing we're gonna test is the response of the horn I'm probably gonna do something technical that I feel you know will will bring the horns true response out now when I look at it the, the actual makeup of the horn, you have some pretty sturdy springs here. Um, if I were to guess, I'd say they were titanium springs. Um, they're dark, so I can't really tell the actual metal. They're probably painted over. I can't t tell the 
metal, but I'm pretty sure it's titanium springs. Uh, they do have stones in them uh, here, stone here, and Tevis Lockett, the, can the president of Cannonball Instruments, said that these stones actually bring out the lowness of the horn. So when I go in response and octave wise, it, it should respond varyingly. Um, so what basically what I'm saying is the highs should be high and the lows should be deep and low. So as we go, we are going to try it out. <laughs> on this horn this horn has a has a very fluid response um, brought on if I were to make a, an opinion on it I think the, the response is brought on by the actual springs the the actual keys themselves spring back very well to your fingers it's not too hard like a like a like a Jupiter um, a Jupiter capital edition in my opinion um, but it's just soft enough to give you that jazz feeling. It's not the softest like like Yamaha. I like the Yamaha's how the response is a little bit softer. But this is actually pretty good. I would I invest in this horn because this horn tends to be cheaper than Yamaha's, the, the cannonballs. So yeah, so if I were to give the response um, a score out of ten, I would probably give it a a, a nine out of ten. It's pretty it's pretty decent. It's pretty good. It's not Yamaha, but it's it's up there, and um, usually saxophones that are step up or intermediate edition uh, saxophones, they tend to be a little strong on the on the response part, you know. And it, for jazz, you know, for me, I like to be comfortable with my saxophone. I like to be one with my saxophone, and I feel it. If I feel like the keys are just smacking me back or smacking back all the time, it's not. It's not a soft response for me. Um, I want my saxophone to play well, which means no leaks. But also, I want to know that I'm getting a good response from the horn. Usually, people who have leaks in the horn tend to have to press hard on these keys, and that's not what I want. But with this horn, I can, you know, get the response I need without having to force anything. So, um, the response, 9 out of 10. Next, we're going to move on to sound. And usually, um, I'm going to try to, uh, I guess I'm going to try to, play some long tones for you guys, let you guys hear that. And then um, I'll let you be the judge, but I'll give it a score at the end. So um, just to um, just to let you guys know, the last test will be the dynamic range. We're gonna go through, you know, some aqua jumps maybe, you know, just to test it. But for now we're testing the sound. Um, but this is, like I said before, this is the Raven Cannonball, not Raven Cannonball, but the, the Black Lacquered with the, um, with the silver tips and the silver keys. Um, I don't know if this makes a difference in the actual um, weight of the keys, I don't know. Uh, but uh, can somebody please comment in the boxes below and tell me. Um, also, uh, this also has the, the stones on it as well. And much like the Raven, um, it has a, a dark lacquered body on the inside. But it does not have the dark lacquer on the, the, the keys. So. Tell, somebody tell me the difference in, in the boxes below. All right, um, moving on to the sound test.
I think it sounds pretty good. Um, one thing I don't like about my sound right now is it sounds like I'm doing a lot of vibrato. And for the reason being is because I have a three and a half plastic reed. Usually I play on a real reed and that real reed um, has a certain resistance to it. And it forces me to have a steady armature. But when this reed jumps a lot, I tend to want to jump with it and do a little bit of vibrato to, you know, not be so overbearing with the sound and try to, you know, uh, calm it down and go to a piano because that's my in instinct that I'm overblowing the horn or overblowing the reed and it's kind of, it's kind of a, a little bit of a bad habit uh, that I that I do but um, I really want to sort of get this horn, you know, singing with the real reed that's warmed up but that's kind of hard to me. To, to you know just do out the bat so um but yeah i would give this sound a a 9 out of 10 as well for the reason being is because when i got to the palm keys the d the sound didn't it didn't create an extra edge. Usually when you get these palm keys, you get an extra edge with your saxophone. Just a little edge, just a little bit of a, you know, a rich edge to the saxophone. But in this case, it kind of stayed in the horn. The edge stayed completely in the horn, as, as a matter of fact. And it didn't reach out and I'm I'm betting to say it wasn't as sharp as it usually is with with um, most of these palm keys because they tend to be sharp, and um, it's very very weighty and very meaty with the sound. It's very big with the sound. Let me try that F sharp here. F sharp does the same thing. It's very meaty, and a lot of times when you're playing a um, a, a, a alto saxophone, when you play that extra F sharp, generally the extra F sharp is an extra hole in the horn. <laughs> I realized that the um, um, the extra F sharp, the one on the side for the intermediate horns here, that uh, that that's an extra um, extra hole in the horn, and that extra hole in the horn provides you that extra lift, an alternate key, and an alternate fingering, but. It tends to be out of tune on, you know, the, the, the cheaper saxophones or the, the saxophones that are most prevalently bought by students. So um, it's good that this has a really weighty F sharp where you can actually blow it. So when you're playing F sharp in your advanced bands or your high school and college band, because that's when you prevalently play this F sharp, it's not thin and your first saxophonist can actually play it. <laughs> so I would give this sound a 9 out of 10, especially because of the palm keys and of course uh, the lower end. Um, let me just play a little bit of that for you. Very dark, very juicy, and subtone, just like I like it. So that's that's a nine out of ten. Um, and the last part will be the range test. For those of you who don't know, it's the altissimo test. So let's let's try to bear with these high notes if they don't play as well as I want them to, because this is a really good horn so far. So. series of the altissimo in my opinion some people think it's the f sharp but i don't i don't usually think of it as an altissimo note but it's whatever to your liking um let's see with the a A, 
beautiful, right? So the A flat, A and B flat, concert B flat. A, the A for the saxophone. Let me just talk in saxophone terms for you. E flat alto saxophone terms. Uh, the G, the A, and the A flat is is really 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 singing. I like those, um, especially with this plastic reed because you, you can tell I'm kind of faulty with the transitions between the altissimo, but it's pretty solid. I like it. But I blame that on the reed. The reed is kind of indicative of my altissimo because if I don't have a, a real reed, I don't have that. It's something different about a plastic reed and the life of a real reed that really gets to me out uh, amateur wise. So um, I'm just trying to do the best I can with what I have, guys. <laughs> All right, uh, let's move on to the B flat. So it's pretty good. I don't know if this is the best fingering for it to get it in tune, but it's pitching. So. Um, Pretty satisfied with that. Uh, going on to the B, the C, the C sharp, and the D. So we're gonna do all of those. So yeah, I probably need to come up with some better fingers for that. So um, uh, I believe that usually, because this has been happening to me recently, that I can't hit the D. And I kind of get stuck between the C sharp somewhere. So um, this plastic reed, I, I really have to get a, either a more open one because I'm on a size three right now, um, and it's really closing my um, the distance between my my piece and reed. So um, I really need a, a, a open, a more open size um, plastic reed. I usually use the three and a half on my tenor, so that's probably where I'm going to go, three and a half or four, because this is really you know. It, it restricts me from playing the way I want to play. So I usually use a chopped up size reed. Sometimes I use four or five, maybe. So, <laughs> um, but yes, so this is the cannonball with the original neck. We're going to move on to the fat neck. Mm -hmm. 